Well, let's waste no more time. Get right to it. Yes. Mohammed Light, Mugi, let's go. And Andrew Guy off to the side of the desk just yelled at myself and Josh that he's very jealous, and I totally understand. This is the kind of match that we all dream about. Of course, you'll be seeing more of Andrew later as he gets to take a little rest and just take in the action. Mo starting off with the Goblin. What's that card again? Uh, the I'm Goblin Cage. Cage. Goblin Cage. There you I'm go. so excited for this match. The I Goblin just forgot. Box. Yeah, the Goblin Box. The Gobble it's there. Box. Yeah, it hasn't moved. What is it? Way to thread the needle there, <laughs> getting the King Tower activation for Mo. So it feels like maybe Ram Rider from Moogie here in game number one. We did see it from him earlier today, and there it comes. Already getting very aggressive with it. MK plus Barbarrel able to take out most of the Golden Knight. Not quite, though. And this is going to be a little baby counter push right here. Will he activate the ability? Yes, he will. You know, you, I got to like activating that ability there just to create separation for those troops, right? So now you can take the Mighty Miner off the board and keep the pressure on. And while that ghost is going to go get a little bit of damage, the baby dragon is going to be on there and force out a big response. Ghost is able to get the second shot, and a response will be required from the Ewas as it crosses the bridge. The question is, does he have Barbaro in hand? If he doesn't, we see a three elixir response for an only 45% health Ewas. That's a tough spot for Mo. Elixir almost even here, about half of an elixir advantage right now for Moogie as we go past the midway point of regulation time. So far, no damage on Moogie's side of the screen. Mo has taken some early blows in both lanes. And so now we have to ask the question, is he using Golem again? Are we going to see it, I think, three sets in a row at this point? Rain Rider is able to make it to the tower. You do hear the uh, competitors, or the, uh, the, the people in the audience groan and also get excited. And no damage there on the right-hand side as Golden Knight not able to get on tower courtesy of that Mega Knight, and now wow. Golem set up in the corner. Wow, I mean, all of these players must have had uh, just a talk with each other and said Golem is uh, is the win condition of choice today, and I love it. I, I, I just love that card. It's, it feels a little surprising, but again, I guess players right now, maybe with nerves, going for matchup, going for surprises. And so now we have to see what the spell is for Muhammad Light. If he has lightning, these Mighty Miners will be able to provide value, but we're going to see the activation of the ability get the most amount of value. If lightning isn't in hand for Muhammad Light, the Mighty Miner will be able to just stack and do a bunch of damage to these golems. Cage will go down a little early there and let that Ram Rider sneak right on through. NATO not going to do enough here, and that's a big blow struck by Moogie as we go into sudden death. Yeah, I mean, Moogie was able to win this matchup just uh, just 20 minutes ago, and right now, he it, it seems like he's figured out how to play this matchup. I mean, these golems are not getting through. This pressure is incredible to watch. Oh, wow, it's the extra shot. splash damage from the Royal Ghost, and things continue to be tough. What does Mohammed Light have to do to break through here? I don't know. One thing I would like to point out is, I, I think the Mother Witch is kind of a scary card to use. It just does not have the DPS that you need. The Golem will be able to get one swing and a great wow. Golden Knight dash. That Mother Witch was a mistake. He had no DPS for that Golem. And the Lightning in. Golemite's gonna take a lot more damage and suddenly Mohammed Light roars into the lead as we get very close to our final minute. 772 to 1200, but this is the more, most important thing. We see the Ghost cycled on the left side. We see the Mega Knight cycled on the left side. He has, I mean, he can't go same lane. That is so dangerous and such a good spot for Mo. And, wow. Uh, wow, and Mo just says, hey, fine. I'll play you in this lane now. I have the advantage on that side. You're not going to get past me here. Golden Knight, Cannon Cart. Everything trying to push all this together. Golden Knight dash on defense. Mega Knight at the bridge. And this is the scary thing. Okay, he cannot use the cage because he needs to save that card just for those Ram Riders. Cannon Cart and the uh, very nice NATO as well. Look at the right side. Will be able to hit the tower. Not yet. And this is 30 seconds left and a big lead for Mo. Mega Knight set up low. 25 seconds remaining. Golden Knight does not get the dash. Ewis picks up high. Cannon Cart on the right hand side. If that Ram Rider comes down, do we see a light? 
I mean, this is the push. Can he get what he needs? We see the lightning coming down on top of the Ram Rider. It is going to stop it. Mo should win this game. Wow, Mohammed Light comes from behind, courtesy of a Golden Knight dash. And now he is one win away from our top three. I mean, right here, we see his hands shake in excitement. This time, not nerves. He is one game away. That lightning, that golem on top of the tower, it, it went from 2,500, wait a second, uh, triple digits now down to 990. That was such a quick turnaround. And of course, we just saw, as you mentioned, Mookie do a great job in that same situation. What's the difference maker here? I mean, I, okay, so what? I, I don't know. That's the thing. I, I, I think this is one of those times where I get to sit back, say, I don't know. I'm just watching. I, I, I can't put myself in that mindset. We get to be a fan sometimes. You know, talking with Morton during the week, he said one of the things that's scariest about Muhammad Light is that he does things that are unorthodox, yes. that you yes. think are mistakes that turn out to be the right call. You play against every other player, he said, and even if they're great, even if their micro is perfect, it's what's expected, whereas Mo turns the unexpected into success. And and that's why he's been such a favorite here. But of course, speaking of favorites, let's take a look at your thoughts on this Mo versus Moogie matchup and 60-40. Honestly, this should be, if they were closer than 50-50, yes. that's what this matchup should be. Exactly, I love that. And okay, so I've had time to collect my thoughts. I was given 30 seconds and now I have my answer. It's his lightning play. I, I, I think Mo is just so smart with how he controls the board that he just knows when to lightning on offense on defense, a, a, a mix of both. When to catch the tower, when to go all the troops, he is different. Well, let's take a look at a, couple of that, a little of that action here for a moment before we jump into game number two for this one. And Josh, you talked about the lightning play. This was that Mother Witch down low that turned out to be quite an issue. Yeah, I just did not like that he, uh, I, I did not like that he played it up there and right there, the golem, you know, exploding with the Golden Knight dash, it just does too much damage to it. I, I, I don't know what he had in cycle. Maybe we could have seen a defensive poison, but right there gets the tower down low and it was beautiful awareness right here as well. The ghost went on the left, followed by the Mega Knight and he goes Golem same lane. So many players wouldn't have made that play, but he understands the matchup. Oh, you talked about that light and it was great. Let's see what they have for us in game number two, Mo with match point. And Fire Spirit to start here for Mo, picked up by the Ice Spirit from Moogie. And Moogie going drill here in game number two. Followed by the Wall Breakers. They're not going to go same lane instead, going to split. Not going to be placed in the back, just at the bridge. We've seen a lot of split Wall Breakers in the back. Moogie starting his own meta, just uh, recovering what used to be so common. And Mo with a bit of a smile there, Josh. Any thoughts behind that? Mo with a smile, okay, let's see. The Miner plus the Mortar plus the Fire Spirit. I mean, all of those kind of match up well. Maybe he's chosen a different spell, or maybe he just knows that uh, the Archer Queen is going to be putting in work throughout this match. Fireball for the Archer Queen. She takes one more shot, but will stay alive. 28-20 on the left-hand side. Fire Spirit for pressure on the right-hand lane. Dark Goblin does his job. Great use of its ability, able to take out the Ice Spirit, plus the Dark Album, plus one of the Wall Breakers. With the help of the Log, the Wall Breakers will not be a problem. So now, with two cards left, Muhammad Light, I think it's gonna be Valk, and uh, you know, depending on the spell, he could just be in a really good spot just to defend over and over from the Wall Breaker drill spam. And Miner this time going to that, right, that, that outside spot one more time. Pretty clear now, no NATO had to expect that after he saw both the drill and the wall breakers. At what point do you expect to see Mo start varying position? Yeah, I, it, that was just a weird position in general. I'm surprised he didn't go right side, but you know, this is why it's so fun to watch Mo because he understands, oh, you know, Inferno Tower reaches, but I'm just gonna be able to get poison value. It was so cool to see him make that play right there. One wall breaker missed, does not connect by a hair. And Valkyrie plus guards will go the opposite direction. First two minutes away into double elixir time. And at the moment, Mohamed Light with the game and damage lead. 
Look at the guard trying to make its way to the Valkyrie. Will not be able to reach the tower just because he took his time. And that's three guards coming down the lane. Archer Queen placed at the bridge. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of elixir for Mugi, so this isn't really that intimidating of a push. And notice how Mo is continuously playing the Fire Spirit plus Log as the drill defense as opposed to wow. a lot of Valks as that drill defense. Thoughts on that, Josh? Uh, sorry, I, I actually did not hear your question. I saw two mistakes made in a row by each player. I've never seen that between these two players. Well, uh, they'll probably clean that up as we go on. Log to work. Now Valk will go back. Guards to make sure that the goblins don't get on tower. Constant pressure from both players, and we are looking at two fairly healthy towers from the both of them. I mean, this is just perfect offense, perfect defense, and neither one is giving an itch. Archer Queen will take the Inferno Tower off the board and create a bit of a counter push here. You have to assume that wasn't a prediction, but at the same time, it just could have been <laughs> right there. Guards are going to attempt to clean up, not going to matter. Log over the middle, and it's not going to be able to catch the Ice Spirit. Great Ice Spirit delay. Drill plus Valk right hand side, Wallbreakers with the left hand side. Mortar takes care of the middle and holds on, gets those goblins off the board as well. That Mortar just did triple defense. And right here, I mean, you, you have the poison, so the poison is putting in a lot of value. But it, oh, right there, Val plays just in time. But this Archer Queen is still getting so much value. Ice Spirit to try to protect the Dark Goblin. And that was such a smart log. He knew he was going to protect the Dark Goblin, so he still used that log even when it looked like he wouldn't need it. What does Mookie need to do here in this final 70 seconds oh. to turn the tides as the mortar connects on the left? Well, right here, Mo needs to protect this mortar. That is what we are going to see. Fireball going to come down, and Mo, er, and Mookie cannot afford to make any more mistakes. These miners, these poisons, I mean, we are going to see a tower down to 700 guaranteed, so he needs to get 2,000 HP worth of damage to have a shot at winning. Guards to the bat, mortar high, log. Plus, guards do clean up, but give up some significant damage, 23-35. And now, minor plus poison, as Mo does finally begin to vary that position. Mortar connection on the right-hand side, 36 seconds left. Valk placed on top, not electing to use the log, instead going in with the Valk, so it would slow down the push. Fire Spirit played to perfection, no shots from the Goblin. 1379 to 2310, 1,000 HP with 22 seconds left. High poison to control the This action. is a mortar. And the fireball in. Will it make enough room? No. Goblins don't get on. About 500 HP separating the poison down. That's got to be it. Miner has to be it. Can the wall breaker sneak on through? Mortar high, and there you have it. Mohammed Light gets revenge in 2022 and is now one win away from the grand final. Well, you were wondering why he smiled when the game started, and that is why. Perfection right there. He knew the matchup. Miners plus poisons. Brilliant defense. Brilliant set.